morning. Welcome to worship at First Presbyterian Church on this Reformation Sunday. Those of you that have braved the cold and are here with us, and those of you that are worshiping at home. I'd like to draw your attention to some of the announcements in the bulletin. Liturgists are still needed um, for some Sundays in November and the month of December. If you are willing to do that, please contact Jill Reed. Her phone number and email address are in the bulletin. Next Sunday, the Senior Choir will practice at 930 and then sing at church. There are shoe boxes available in the Narthex today for the Samaritan's Purse Operation Christmas Child. Uh, there is information in the bulletin about returning them and also a website where you can look for additional information about what to fill those shoe boxes with. Next Sunday, we will have the annual fall congregational meeting. Uh, in addition to electing officers and looking at the tentative budget, uh, we'll also be voting on the bylaws, an amendment to the bylaws to include electronic and remote access to meetings. Today for Halloween, the Joy of Fellowship Committee is sponsoring a trunk or treat in our parking lot at five o'clock. Adults can decorate their vehicles or their trunks and have them uh, filled with treats for the children and guests of our church. And COVID masks are required to be worn by everyone. The food bank is going to be doing Thanksgiving and Christmas baskets this year. Uh, and the items that are needed for those baskets are listed in the bulletin as well. And finally, we are going to be doing the Advent devotionals again with the Clearfield Presbyterian Church Pastor Katie has dates and scripture verses here at church. And if you are not worshiping with us, you can also uh, contact Katie um, or stop by the manse on Mondays and Thursdays from 10 to 2 uh, to select um, a day for those devotionals. Are there any other announcements? Then let us prepare our hearts for worship. Peace be to this house, and to all that enter therein. Peace be to those that enter, and to those that go out therefrom. Peace be to those that love the church, and that love our Lord Jesus Christ. 
This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, thank you for today. May we embrace it as your gift, celebrate your faithfulness, and live this day fully for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Therefore, let us confess our sins together using the unison prayer of confession. Almighty and most merciful Father, who through countless ages of the church has loved us unconditionally, you have been faithful in your nurturing presence and your loving care. You have blessed us in your beloved Son with forgiveness and everlasting life, strength and hope for times of trial, given us family, friends, and possessions, and most especially today, you have given us this church, 
and yet we acknowledge that much of our lives are often disfigured by personal sin and selfishness. Forgive us, Lord, and restore to us the joy of your salvation, that we might live to be living reminders of Jesus Christ, both within and outside these walls. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. And now a time for personal silent confession. If anyone is in Christ, that person is a new creation. The past is finished and gone. Everything has become fresh and new. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are all forgiven. Amen. Glory be to the Father. was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Thank <laughs> you.
first reading is a reading from the Gospel of John, chapters 21, verses 15 through 19. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. forgiveness. When Jesus was on the beach with Peter in the passage that was just read, he was forgiving Peter. He was basically giving him another chance because Peter had messed up. And he talked to him about loving and following him. One of the ways we best follow Jesus is to be forgiving. Now the world is not very forgiving. In fact, if you know anything about soccer, if you make a mistake in soccer, say something unsportsmanlike or something you're just not supposed to do it that way, the referee will hold up a yellow card. That's your warning. After that, if you do something, you get the yellow card and a red card and you're out of the game. That's not very forgiving. You literally only get one chance. Thank goodness God does not treat us that way. But because of that, we should not treat others that way. We should always be forgiving. In fact, the Lord's Prayer teaches us that the measure of forgiveness that we give to others is the measure of forgiveness that we will get from God. Now that's a powerful thing. That basically says we need to be forgiving. So I hope that you will say you're sorry when you need to. And I hope that when someone has wronged you, you will give them forgiveness and peace. We love you. Look forward to seeing you again soon. Amen. I invite you now to hear the word of God as it comes to us from Matthew, the Gospel. The sixth chapter, verses 9 through 13. Jesus said, when you pray, pray like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The reading ends the 13th verse of the 6th chapter. The grass withers and the flower fades, 
but the word of our God shall stand forever. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O loving Father, may the words of our mouths, the meditations of our hearts, may all of the things we do be acceptable in your sight. For Lord, you truly are our rock and our sure redeemer. Amen. Today we come to that line in the Lord's Prayer, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Forgiveness has to do with sin. And sin in the Bible is described as armatia, which is the archer shooting at a target and missing the mark. And that is sin. And sin plays a very important role in our lives. When Martin Luther was struggling, even though he'd become a monk, he'd done all kinds of things to try to feel worthy before God, he was struggling because he knew he was still a sinful man. And he was very, very dejected. But one day he was reading from the Romans, Paul's letter to the Romans, about grace. And he learned from God inspiring him that day that he is forgiven, that it's not something he can earn. It's something bought and paid for by our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross long ago. I like to teach the young people grace, God's riches at Christ's expense. If you have any doubt what grace is, that's what it is. And it's given freely for each of us. Now, we know that we are not always forgiving. So let us look a bit at this particular part of the Lord's Prayer. Debts and trespasses. That seems to be quite a controversy in our world, and yet it's really kind of simple and funny. Uh, the lore or the legend for how the, those words were chosen are that the Scots were merchants, so they liked debts, and the English were landowners, so they liked trespassing because they didn't want people on their property. The truth is, Thomas Cranmer, when he wrote the Book of Common Worship, he used the Tyndale version of the Bible. Now, the Tyndale version actually mistranslates Ophel Ophelia Mata, mistranslates it as trespasses when it's really debts. Now, the Scots, who were Presbyterian, basically used the King James Version. And though there are some weaknesses to that version that I'm sure you all know, in that particular case, it is translated correctly. Because Jesus uses the word Ophelia Mata in the Lord's Prayer. It is not the word Paratamata, which is trespasses. However, because it's so important, he repeats the concept just after the Lord's Prayer, and there he uses the word for trespasses. So that's sort of your trivia for the week. But that's why we use debts and debtors. And you will hear me at any funeral, any wedding, just kind of plunge on and people catch on. Most people can say either one and feel pretty comfortable. The other wording that is really important next is the word us. Once again, Jesus is telling us, it's not about me. It's about all of us. Forgiveness from God, Jesus' sacrifice on the cross was for the whole world. We don't get to determine who gets forgiven and not. Jesus died for all. And we are to respect and love all. Now, we know that original sin is a part of all of us, so we can't really be stingy with forgiveness. Every Sunday we have a prayer of confession. We always confess our sins, at least once a week. If you're like my precious father-in-law, before he went to heaven, every time he said a blessing at table, he asked for forgiveness of our sins wasn't something I'd ever heard anyone else do at the table, and I love it. My husband has picked up that beautiful tradition, 
and in a very real way, it will help us remember one of the precious parts of my precious father-in-law. Now, one of the most difficult things of this part of the prayer is that like Martin Luther, we sometimes don't feel we are forgiven. We don't accept God's forgiveness. Now, that is never true because God is in the forgiving business. But when we don't accept it, we build up a wall between us and God, a wall not of his making, but of our own. It's so important to be willing to accept forgiveness. In fact, we won't be very good at giving it unless we know how to receive it and receive it well. I still remember in my doctoral studies in Chicago, a woman dropped into one of our classes. She wasn't a regular classmate. She had been through some really bad times. She had lost her church, her husband, her children because of something she had done. And when she reached this pastoral care cohort, she found love, she found acceptance. And once she told her story through tears and we watched her agony, one of the ministers in the group, a man, went forward and placed his hands on her head. And through her tears, she looked at him and he said, Jesus Christ died for you. All of your sins are forgiven. Go in peace. Go in love. I will never forget that. Because I don't think I had ever been in her position. And yet, I understood it very well. As a clergy couple, as a mother, so many things. Bless her. Because it was so hard for her to accept God's forgiveness. Let us remember that when we are struggling like Martin Luther. Let us remember that it has nothing to do with our worthiness. It has to do with Christ's love for us. And that's literally all it takes. Remember, Jesus on the cross said, Forgive them, for they know not what they do. We can be forgiving, too. If you understand the Greek in this particular diet on the cross, you would know that he says it over and over and over again. It is a continuing thing that he is basically saying most of the time he is on the cross. Can you imagine being put in that kind of a position, in that kind of pain, and still wanting to be forgiving. That's basically what Jesus is asking of us in this prayer. There is an expression that I love. It says, unforgiveness is like drinking poison and waiting for the other person to die. <laughs> it doesn't work. And it rarely hurts the other person. But it can eat us alive. Carl Menninger, the great psychiatrist, in Topeka, Kansas, many years ago. He said that if his patients just believed that they were forgiven by God, 70% of them would walk out of his office healed. That's the power of forgiveness. That's why Jesus puts such a strong emphasis on what he is calling us to do. So we have to ask ourselves every day, who am I angry with? Who have I not forgiven? And as Christians, in the words of Yancey in his particular book on Amazing Grace, as Christians, we have the obligation, the responsibility to be the initiators of forgiveness. And that's really what this prayer is saying. We are expected to forgive. No matter what has happened, we are expected to forgive. And you've seen some incredible examples. I remember long before I ever dreamed of living in Pennsylvania, which I love, I remember reading about the Amish schoolhouse and the man that came in. And afterwards, the Amish families 
that took food to his widow. After all the horrible things he had done, their act of forgiveness is stunning. But that's the kind of forgiveness we are called to. There is a contemporary Christian song that the youth love called Grace Wins. And I love this. It has a litany of things. And basically it starts out with the prodigal son. With the prodigal son, grace wins. The woman at the well, grace wins. And you can name all the biblical stories where grace wins. And then you can add yourself. And you can add your neighbor that perhaps has trespassed. You can fill it in any way you want to. But John Newton, the former slave ship owner, he knew that grace wins. He learned that, and he became a totally different person. He wrote Amazing Grace. He became an Anglican priest. He became a forgiving, forgiven person. So whatever is out there in your life that you're still holding on to, please let it go. And if there's something you have done that you are not able to forgive yourself for, please accept God's forgiveness. Accepting it will make you realize it is much easier to forgive when we know we are forgiven. So go and forgive and let grace win. Amen. saying together the affirmation of faith. We confess and acknowledge one God alone, to whom alone we must plead, whom alone we must serve, whom alone we must worship, and in whom alone we must put our trust, who is eternal, infinite, immeasurable, incomprehensible, omnipotent, invisible, one in substance, and yet distinct in three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, by whom we confess and believe all things in heaven and earth, visible and invisible, to have been created, to be retained in their being, and to be ruled and guided by His inscrutable providence. For, for such an end as his, his eternal wisdom, wisdom goodness, and justice have appointed, and to the manifestation of his own glory. Amen. Here's the 
attention to the prayer concerns that are printed in the bulletin. And I have a list of others to be added. And we will be praying. Uh, this is a thanksgiving for Todd Reed, who graduated from Triangle Tech on Wednesday as an electrician. Amazing. And prayers for future job opportunities to come his way. And another joy, Ella Cochran and Ivy Reed made district choir, and Ivy Reed made district band on trumpet. All Yay! right. All right. for Chris Hartshorn Brickle from her sister Claudia Conti. We need to pray for her. Uh, this is also a joy. If you get this, oh, add PO Soccer. And they're going to district playoffs and posted it because Will is on the team. Right. We also have Mike Smith who is hospitalized for high blood pressure. Making sure I feel, oh, and Dr. Paladina's daddy, uh, or has early dementia, needs your prayers, Don Paladina. And Terry Piggy Dobson is in our father's house. And Bob Divini uh, has throat cancer, needs our prayers. As we go into praying for our families and our homes, I remind you that Kirkin of the Tartans has to do with a historical event when the King of England did not want the Scots to wear their tartan because they wore it whenever they went to war and he was afraid of it. But their tartan was representative of all of their families. And it was very special. So the practice developed in the Scott Kirk, Kirk his church, that they would bring a very tiny piece and slip it to the pastor. And he would bless every single clan, every family, every person. And we like to give that nod to our historical roots. Not all of us are Scottish or Irish, but the history is strong for the Presbyterian Church. Normally, I have you bring your house keys and family crest and pictures of your family, pictures of you as an individual, and I lay hands on them and bless them in the same tradition. Today, because of COVID, I did not ask anybody to put anything on the table because we're not touching things and then sharing the touching things. But I have our 2020 directory. There are also people that have been worshiping with us in here, people that have joined more recently that are written in pen in here. Everything is in here. And we also have a number of people online from various places here in the community to other states across the country. I know there's a Diane Stern who is in Arkansas. That's just an example. They're spread out My in South Carolina. All kinds of folks are on. So we will be blessing all of these individuals and families as we pray our litany today, and we pray for those who have been lifted up in our concerns. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-loving Father, we are so very blessed to be the recipients of your love and your grace, your forgiveness, but more than that, your presence and care in each and every one of our lives. Lord, this day we lift up all those that have been named. They have various needs. We're proud of our people. We thank you for protecting them for helping them to grow in wisdom and stature. We lift up those who are grieving. We lift up those who are struggling with dementia,
cancer, those who've been diagnosed with COVID, those who are struggling with COVID. We lift up our nation, our political climate, our leadership across the board. All of these things, O oh Lord, need your touch. They need your guidance in all that we do. And this day, O oh Lord, we ask your blessings on every single person that has any connection to this church whatsoever. Whether they are an online worshiper or they are a regular member of the church, an officer, elder, deacon, choir member, bell ringer, all of those wondrous things. We also lift up those who visit our church, who are here because they feel loved and hugged by God. We ask that you would bless each and every individual, each and every family this day and from here on in their lives. May they feel your presence and your love and may they accept your forgiveness and your grace. And now, O oh Lord, we ask that you would hear us as we thank you for your faithfulness in Phillipsburg, our community. Almighty God, you built your church on the rock of human faith and trust. We praise you for Jesus Christ, the foundation and cornerstone of all we believe. We praise you, O God. For the faith of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and for Moses, who led your people out of slavery and established the law in their hearts. We praise you, O God. For the prophets who listened for your word and called your people back from disobedience and from the word of human made gods. We, we, we praise you, O oh God. For Christ our Savior, who loved us and gave himself for us on the cross. We, we praise, praise you, O oh God. For the apostles and martyrs of the church, who gave their lives that we in our day might receive the good news of grace and forgiveness. We, we praise you, O oh God. For the great people of history, the Reformation leaders, whose love for your church made it a willing instrument of your care and mercy. We, we praise, praise you, O oh God. For the ministers, elders, deacons, and all the members and friends online and present, the young, the old, the male, the female, who have had any part in the ministry of this part of the body, call First Presbyterian Church of Phillipsburg, and all responsible for bringing us to this great day of Reformation. We praise you and give thanks to God. Let us now lift our voices to pray as one, as Jesus has taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now we normally bring before God our tithes, our offerings, ourselves. And on this Reformation Sunday, we remember that those gifts are very special. They are a part of our response to God as our Lord, as our Savior. This day, I thank you for all the ways in which you have continued to give. And I ask that you would remember that there are options for doing so on the website for PayPal, the mail slot of the manse, the mail itself, and if you are happen to be in in-person worship, the plate at the Presque Isle entrance. We ask that we bless. We ask God to bless all the gifts that have been received since last week. Let us pray. O oh, gracious and loving Father, we thank you that you continue to bless each and every one of us. And it is you who make it possible for us to be blessings. We ask a blessing today upon the gifts that we present 
and the gifts that will come in during the week, those that have been given in the past week. We also ask your blessings upon the Pine Grove Mills Congregation and Pastor Carl Campbell, nursing homes and special care facilities, Presbyterian Village at Hollidaysburg, Windy Hill Village, and for all the churches witness to the local community. Today, O oh Lord, we thank you for our presbytery and its birthday. We thank you for all the ways in which it has enabled us as the church to continue faithful service to you. Now, O oh Lord, we ask your blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Yeah. 